Hi everyone, welcome to my XTool YouTube video series. In this series, I will be working with XTool Creative Space and making projects using XTool P2 Machine. Um, to start this series, the first thing I'll do is teach you about the XTool Creative Space software, which is by XTool itself. It's a software where you can design files and make, make anything you want using the XTool machines. So the first thing you need to do is download the software. It is free on the XTool website on the software link here. When you click on download, it will take you to this page here and you can select the device that you are down downloading it on. Since I have this already downloaded, I'll just open this XTool Creative Space here. Now to move on, I'll show you the features this Creative Space offers. So let's start. Uh, when you look on the left panel here, we see that there's an option of shapes here. When I open this, there are so many shape options. It has basic shapes, borders, and all different kinds of uh, images over here. So I'll just select two, I'll just select basic shapes here right now and select two shapes from here, one rectangle and one triangle. Okay. So over here, suppose I will just make one of these bigger. Now, when I select these two, I, I get a few options open here. What are these options? The first we'll talk about is alignment. Alignment is like how you want the two objects or multiple objects to be aligned. Like, do you want them to be aligned left? Which means that if I click on align left, the leftmost part point of the two objects will align. Now, if I click on align right, the rightmost point of the objects will align. Similarly, if I do align top, it will align the top topmost point of the two objects and it, it will align them uh, on top. Now, if I choose align bottom, it will align the bottom point point of the object. Um, there's another thing is that what if you want it to be centrally aligned, like, you know, uh, they are perfectly sent like one object is on top of the other and centrally aligned. So you do horizontal align center and then you do vertical align center. That makes it centrally aligned, like completely center. So it doesn't matter what you follow first. You could say vertical first and horizontal, like I can go back to original and then I can do uh, vertical align center first and then horizontal align center. Doesn't matter, it will bring you to the same point here. Now there are other options here, like this thing says combine. Combine, when I click on it, it opens four more options for me. There's Unite, Subtract, United Overlap, Subtracted Overlap. Let's look at all of these things one by one. Suppose I have this triangle a little above here and then something like this, right? I want to combine these two. Now, what, if I unite this, this means if I unite it, it will create another shape, which is a, which is a combination of a triangle and a rectangle it's how i said it right so this would this is now one object okay now if i go back now i select these two now if i want to subtract now here's the thing when you're subtracting something it's like basically you're removing that part of the object now it depends what are we subtracting here whatever object is on the bottom layer will get will will rem we'll remove like the upper object the upper layer shape will remove that the part of that object so for instance i have this part here right the one that's like unite like this one here that part will get cut right since the rectangle is on top of the triangle we will be left with just a tiny triangle part the triangle part that is above the rectangle so if i click on subtract now see i am left with just the small triangle now going back to this now what if the triangle was above the rectangle how I can do this, it's right now, the rectangle is above the triangle. I can click on the rectangle and click on arrange. It gives me a few options. I can bring it to front, send it backwards, bring forward, send back. So now I want to take it backwards. So I'm going to do send backwards, right? Now this is going to be under the triangle. Let's see if it's under the triangle or not. The triangle is on top of it now. So let's, I'll select these two. With combine, if I subtract it now, let's see what happens. 
now that I subtracted the two, like one part, one object from the other, only the tri the triangle part that was on top of the rectangle, that part is removed from here, right? So now, which so now, if you can make sense out of it, whichever object is on top of the other object, that the whatever is uh, covering the bottom object, that part will be subtracted, and then you'll have another object which is a combination or like combination which could be a unity or a cutout of what you are doing with the uh, different objects next thing is in here is unite at overlap okay so basically when you're uniting at overlap you see these two wherever they're like whatever part of these two objects wherever they're overlapping it i'm just going to be left with that part so if i click on these like select the two united at overlap this is what i'm left with i'm left with the part which was uh, common between the two uh, between the two objects now going back here for instance I take this in here between this right I want now I just want a rectangle from which a triangle is cut out so I will select these two and go and combine when I subtract right now these are two different objects two different shapes when I do subtract at overlap I will be left with just one object and that object is a triangle is a rectangle with a triangle cut out cut out right so now it's just one object now i'll just go back to Control z okay now there's another option here when i click on the rectangle there is i can rotate this which is i can say i want to rotate it by 45 degrees i was able to rotate this right now Let's bring it back to its original shape. Let's create an outline of this one. So I can choose how, like the distance of the outline. We can do 12.3 mm. Right now it's in mm, so I'll just do OK. And then this is the outline of this. So what we can do is, and suppose we want to engrave the inner parts. So I'll do engrave, and then I created a outline to it so i'll say okay cut this outline so i can choose things like this now the inner side is engraved the outer is set to cut so this is the outline function okay there's more to it let's just get back to the normal one i will change this to score right now okay uh the thing over here is that i can create a grid array now what's a grid array now i want to test or like i want to make multiple copies of this rectangle so i'll just click on grid array and it will give me basic one i can increase or decrease if i want more maybe i want like five of these this side and to this side okay and then it will create five like you know five columns and two rows for me right so i'll just go back to the original one that's the array maybe i want to create a circular array create like different designs so i can choose this and make it different copies out of it we can play around with this and create this and i get this um pattern here now what else can we do here how about i do a material test array okay that's amazing if i want to test my material with different speeds and functions what i can do is just click on material test array and then okay it will create a material test array for me here and every okay let me just make it a little smaller fix it to the screen okay now if i click on this i can this is all grouped together let me try to ungroup it i'll ungroup it now everything is going to be a separate one i'll click on this and i can check the settings here the settings here are the power is 100 percent the speed is 250 that's what it corresponds to if i click on this this is 100 power 190 speed and it created that automatically so you can test this on different materials on word and everything and then figure out which settings works the best for you for engraving or for scoring or for cutting on different materials if there are preset as well but then you can test it yourself as well this is a really good option and this is amazing okay um i will now get rid of this the second now second thing i want to move forward to is text text over here i wish i could just like type over here but they have a pop-up window where you can type your text i will write suhira right now that's my name and i can change the size from here basic stuff but 
if I don't want to, I can just select this and like change it from here, right? I can change the font style, maybe change to this one. I can choose the style if I want regular or I want, or I want bold, like the ones that are available with this. And then I can choose either choose this, whichever. I can increase or decrease the spacing between the letters. Maybe I want to do two, two spacing. No, maybe I want to do minus 1.5 spacing, right? Or minus one spacing. Now that I have minus one spacing, these are overlapping each other. What I can do is I can weld these letters. When I weld these letters, what will happen is this will become one object and not won't be a won't it won't be a te text anymore, right? I will just select weld, and when I weld it, these letters join together. Whatever was overlapping over there, they joined, right? So now the U H I R A part of this word that will cut cut out together because now they are a single object all right they won't be in different pieces i'm just going back to the original form to show you this this thing here you see a circle here if i click on this what happens is now if i can like after clicking i'll drag here and this will curve the text this is such a great feature to have on this creative space i can either go this way or that way however right however i want it to uh I mean, however I want it to look, right? Suppose I want to engrave my name in a circle. So like on top of the circle, so I have the circle here and my name here. I can adjust this accordingly, like have this here. I don't like it. Just maybe like a little bit more and then, you know, align, align these horizontal align center. Oh, oh, didn't want to align this one, but okay. So now I can do that right away in the X tool creative space that's a great feature to have all right moving on we have x tool art this is an amazing option here in which you can create whatever art you want you get some points here and i can show my history you can type anything here and it will just do that so suppose i want uh i want to see a mandala so and if i didn't then click on generate it will generate it I'll show my history here and then you can see today I tried Mount Rainier and it, it generated Mount Rainier for me. So this is a really good feature to have if you want to just put your thoughts into like, like put your words into images. So, you know, that will be an amazing, this is an amazing thing to do. Uh, moving forward with codes. Oh my God, this is such a great feature to have right here when you especially make like QR code, like, you know, you want to generate a QR code. And over here, I will write www.facebook.com slash mangrove company. That's the, that's my page link. I will save this and it creates a barcode, a QR code for me. Before I show it, show this how, show how this looks on my, like when I do this, I will also create a barcode so that I can scan together and I can show you. Suppose I'll write here X to p2 demo let's create this one as well and then i'll take you over to my phone screen and show you how this looks or what it shows when i scan these two okay so over here i am i am going to uh, move my camera towards the QR code and let's see. Okay, this is the link that it's showing. Let's click on it. Perfect. It is opening my Facebook page, the link that I put in the QR code generator, and this is really cool. Now let's see if it can read that barcode in which I wrote X2 P2 demo. So let's go down and upload a picture here so let's take a picture of this all right let's see let's see perfect this is x2 p2 demo that's exactly what i typed when i was creating this barcode and this is such a cool feature to have these were really cool features, the barcode and the QR code. I'm amazed. Uh, so let's move on. I will now import 
an image of an arrow random picture I downloaded for this demo purpose I can scale to fit it on canvas or display in the original size this is an image um, let's try to trace this image let's see if it can get rid of the white spaces and just give me the outline of this image so I will trace the image and click on save it this is a PNG and this is what it did when I traced the image it made a outline it made an outline of it really cool these are the features that x2 is providing in their creative space you don't need to use lightman for it or you don't need to use inkscape or illustrator for this all right um what other thing can i do here you can import your files open project import image um let's see if i want to what other options i have and i have my device connected i can score this engrave it cut it and the settings can be manual i can you know just type in the setting here or whatever or i can choose any material from here with the predefined settings i can click on more and x2 has uh, some of these here and i can use maybe i'm cutting um suppose a black acrylic so i'll just click on use and it will apply all the set the settings of 600 black acrylic of whatever is here you did see that it changed the background it just loaded the last picture i took from my device of the from the camera all right so if i cut this it says reference here now it is using the preset cutting um, speed and power for a 6 mm black acrylic so like that i can you know change here maybe i'm cutting 6 mm basswood so i'll just click on this and then if i click it on this now the settings have changed now if i'm scoring it the settings will be preset different now this is preset you can change or test whatever settings you want to by uh, testing different settings one second i want to show one more thing first before i do smart fill i can when i click on conveyor feeder here it will open something like this right now when i click on the arrow and click on cut it gives me an option of tab generation tab generation if i turn it on this basically means that I want to generate small tabs so that when my material is passing through the conveyor feeder, whatever is cut out doesn't fall under, you know, doesn't it doesn't fall and become a hindrance or, you know, creates some mess inside the laser machine. So it's ho it holds the design in place. And all you have to do is once it's, it's cut, you just pop it out and it will, you know, just uh, with your fingertip, just pop it out and it will come out so that's what that's also a great feature to have so that you know the pieces are not just falling around everywhere uh, so this is about the tab generation um what else here yes that is pretty much it about the software um you can see the options you can explore more this is a great this is a great software.